Well, I've got my miniature greenhouse that I pulled out of my large greenhouse. What I did is simply put saran wrap and over the top of this and what I use to support it is the spikes from my solar path lights. And it worked out well. I've had this in here for two weeks and the plants are doing fine and now I'm going to take them out for the first time. It's a bit cold out but it's cold in here so this should be okay. I've got my little babies out and got them on the chicken coop. Just going to hose them down with a sprayer. The sprayer is gentle on the plants. It's breezy today so I hope they'll be okay. It's very windy. It's also quite cold but since the sun is shining I hope they'll be fine. I think what I'll do you're supposed to harden your plants. And I think what I'll do is leave these out by day and take them in at night. Plus, I need the workspace where they've been sitting on my desk. So by day, I can have that space freed up. Well, my tent survived the night. I still have to make some adjustments because it's it's actually very high on this side. I don't think it's supposed to be that high on this end. And it keeps getting ripped over this way. So I'll have to readjust the top. And I also have to pull it tighter. But the wind was making that nearly impossible to do today, uh, yesterday. But it made it. It's supposed to be windy still today with gusts up to 40 miles an hour, so I really hope it'll be okay. I definitely need to get a windmill out here and use this power. There's no more snow and ice on the ground. So right now, here's my fridge. Simply a bag outside. I've got eggs and meat and cheese and carrots and butter. And it's actually doing all right. I leave it out here by day. The sun only shines in the early morning hours, so it doesn't hurt a thing. And it gets freezing at night, so that's fine. And by night, it goes inside my truck. My truck is my nighttime refrigerator to protect the food from predators. That's what I do each morning. I pull the food out of the truck and put it over here behind my camper and the night before I go to bed I put it back in the truck to keep the predators out. And that's it for now, that's my fridge until I get enough electricity to power something inside here and cool food down. And hopefully I figure something out before it gets warm. Since the sun is shining, I just pulled down my curtain for now on my back window. Now I do have this foil window weather seal on here but this is a really cold weak point and that's especially right where I sleep obviously the cat is enjoying the morning sunlight very much. Now this is a, a bad weak point so I had this the foil car window sunshade up in the in there to reflect the heat back into the camper. Now that wasn't enough. Then I put up blankets and all kinds of stuff. And I'm still not getting enough insulation. So I'm rethinking my whole plan here today. I've got here I've got multiple layers. I've got reflective foil, shades, blankets, all kinds of stuff on here. Over here as well, I have three layers on this window trying to keep the warmth in here. But during the daytime, I want to capture some of the sunlight. So today I want to try to design a passive solar heater for this window for the mornings. But it has to be removable so at night I can cover this up again. Well, I've got my truck up to the creek and I brought my 30 gallon RV tank with me. I'm going to attempt I don't know how this is going to work with a funnel 
and a long hose like this, but I'm going to attempt to fill this tank with five gallon buckets from water at the creek. Now I can drive to the creek at a certain point where the property comes up near the road, the main entrance. So this is going to be a challenge to fill these buckets here. That, that is some pretty water. If I could only set up a hydro plant here, I'd be hooked up. There is a lot of power here. And there is trout in this. I've seen a lot of trout in here. There's some good food. Now the challenge is to get this water into this thing. This is going to be very awkward. This is where I could use two people. Seriously. Yeah, this is not going to work with a funnel. This is going to be a messy job, I fear. And cold. This water's cold. awkward. I have to figure a way to do this. I have to seriously figure a better way to do this. Well, there's a couple gallons of water in my tank. Well, there's more than one way to figure something out. I just found an old piece of garden hose. And I sucked on it a second. Started myself a siphon. Run it right down inside the tank. This will take some time, but I will have running water tonight. One bucket at a time. I'm filling up this tank. There's the water level. Slowly get it filled. Now I've got my last bucket of water going into the tank. I turned the tank around because it was leaning and I wanted to get as much water as I could in here. Might as well make it worth my while with the gas prices how they are and this is a truck my car being gone I calculate every trip to the finest detail so I'll fill this right up well, I'm down at the creek doing my, my laundry there's this old piece of fence which is perfect for hanging my stuff out to dry I won't go into details, of course, as you've seen this last time, but by the creek, just doing my wash. Today is creek day. A lot of people think living on your own like this, you have plenty of time. You should have plenty of free time, you should be able to kick back and relax. Well, that's not true. I just did my laundry, got my truck up here, I've got water in the back of the truck that I'm going to put into my camper tank later, got more laundry hanging here dripping out, I still have to get them inside the dry. I am going to recondition this pan, and it's already four o'clock in the after, it's already four o'clock in the afternoon, and I haven't even really had a proper lunch. And this is my typical day. Busy, busy, busy. So now I have a tank of water. And I have to figure out how to get it in 
to my camper. So I scavenged up some pieces of hose. I think what I'll do, it's not too dirty. I'm going to run this hose inside. Then I have to go inside and pull it through. It'll stay in there. Well, I have this hose here. This has an end on it to fit another hose. Let's see if I can do this. Should it flow water? Yes, it flows water. If I can get them to mate. Now, I should have water flowing. The hose flows in through there, goes down into my onboard tank, and I hear water trickling. I don't think it's very fast. Yeah, it's very slow, but it's running. That's definitely a good thing. Now it's very windy and cold out and I just washed my clothes so I had to get creative. I have a full bathtub here but the problem is the walls slope down at an angle and I wanted to take the shower curtain. It normally mounts here and runs across there's a point there and I wanted to use a shower curtain t to hang clothes on but it was too it, it wasn't holding the weight so I put a, a hook in the frame here and ran it across here and used the tension of the rod and I'm supporting it with a piece of wood for now to help keep it up I couldn't find a piece of frame up in here I would have happily hung it on a second point but there's no frame where I can get to at this angle so anyway, for now, I'm going to hang up my clothes here to dry inside. Now my clothes can hang here and dry, and if they drip, it doesn't matter, it goes into the bathtub. So that's what I'll do on rainy days and cold and windy days like today. The wind is just too strong, it would tear them right off the line even if it wasn't so cold. Well, the tank is empty. That's as far as it's going to go. And I just removed the hose. So let's go inside and see if I have running water. Here's my water pump on-off switch. I'm a little bit nervous here. I hear the sound of water. Uh-oh. Well, I did have running water pouring right out here and all over my floor. I am sitting here sopping it up. I forgot that I took out my hot water heater because I won't use it. And I have an open line. So until I close this, so much for running water in the camper. At least it works.